Hello, and welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of my very favorite video game consoles. It's kind of a hidden gem, I think, amongst game systems. This is the 1975 release of the Fairchild Channel F Video Entertainment System. What makes this system remarkable is that it's the first reprogrammable game machine. That means it's the first to use interchangeable ROM cartridges and it kicks off the second generation of video game consoles. We'll be taking a look at the original Channel F and the upgraded Channel F System 2. So stick around. We're going to start out this video by taking a look at what's in the Channel F box. So some interesting history on the Channel F is originally called Just the Fairchild Video Entertainment System, or VES. After Atari came out with the Atari Video Computer System, or VCS, the following year, Fairchild changed the name of their console to prevent consumer confusion and accused Atari of purposely naming their console in order to cause confusion. One thing I want to say is this sucker is heavy and it's really heavy because the FEC or the FCC used to require that game systems have extra shielding to prevent radiation leakage when they were cartridge based. That way your radiation wouldn't leak out from the cartridges when you switched them. This changed when Texas Instruments began R&D on the TI-99 series of computers because they didn't want to pay to put all that extra metal shielding in there. It's also why early Atari 2600 consoles are referred to as heavy sixers. They're heavy because they have a ton of freaking shielding in them. Taking a look at the front of the console, we see it has a beautiful, freaking gorgeous wood grain finish. I love the look and aesthetic of this machine so much. Four buttons on the front, which we'll talk about as we go through some one of the games. We'll definitely play a game in this video. Cartridge slot, cartridge eject. Really nice. Here's a feature I really like of this. It has this nice acrylic cover with the system name and logo. But in it, it stores our controllers, which are some of the best controllers in retro gaming. And we're definitely taking a close look at the controllers during this video. See the wood grain looks nice on the side. The console looks like an 8-track player and it's designed to fit into a, an entertainment center as a modern piece of electronics for its time. So it wouldn't look out of place as a toy like maybe you would say an NES would, you know, a decade later. Taking a look at the back of the console, I have a power supply, which is built in to the console, which I really don't like. I really wish that this was detachable. It makes storage a little difficult. You can see it gets bent easily and I'm worried about it wearing down. And we have a standard video cable coming out the back. And right here on the back, there's a power switch. The system comes with an instruction book so we can see the console and the controllers. Let's take a look through it. We have instructions on what each of the buttons do, how to connect it to an RF switch. And then there are instructions for the built-in games, the best of which is Hockey. That'll be getting its own video review all by itself. It has a built-in tennis game. And we have some information on troubleshooting the system and we see the warranty. Channel F System 2 is not an upgrade. It's not a sequel console. It's not like PlayStation to the PlayStation 2. It's more like Genesis 2 to the Sega Genesis, where it's a cosmetic upgrade and a, and, a, and a slight functionality upgrade. So we see bigger, brighter packaging now. 
This is more in line with video game systems where we have advertisements for games on the side and rear of the box. Opening up the box, let's take a look at the system itself. So in the box, let's get the console out and I'll show you a couple things about it. So we see a Channel F system that is a lot more streamlined in the system too. In the back, there are holders for controllers and placed around the controller cord. These are also much large, longer controller cords, so it gives you a lot more reach. We have a little bit more modern looking front. We have the same four buttons, but the power switch, instead of being in the back, is now right in the front, which is really super convenient. We still have a gorgeous wood grain finish. And in the back, we still have a wired power supply, but we don't have a wired video cable, and we no longer have wired controllers. What it now uses, let's see if we can get right up in there. What it now uses are nine pin controllers. So the only thing that this still has built into it is the power supply, which as you can see, compared to the original one, is a lot smaller and more streamlined. Channel F System 2 comes with a slightly more colorful manual but it's still mostly grayscale on the inside. And this is just telling us a lot of the same kind of information the previous manual told us, how to set the system up, how to use the controllers, how to change video cards, and that's it. Instead of having the manual tell us how to play the games, the System 2 comes with this little cheat sheet on how to play the games and use the controller so that you can reference this as you're playing. It's a really kind of a nice touch. The uniqueness of the Channel F controller is one of my favorite parts about the console. The controller is held in the non-dominant hand and then the head of the controller is held with your dominant hand. So I'm left-handed so I'm holding it in my right and the head of the controller I'll hold with my left hand. The controller twists left and twists right. It pushes down and it pulls up. So you have a total of four actions, and we're gonna see this in action as we play through the game today. I wanna to show you the cartridges. So they came in these really brightly rainbow colored neat cartridge boxes. So the boxes show the graphics of what is in the game cartridge. And a lot of the early game cartridges had multiple games on this. This one really has two games, Shooting Gallery and Tic-Tac-Toe, it has a couple of drawing games. Later games would be dedicated to an entire game. Later boxes took on a different art style where the art box art on the front was mostly dedicated to the game that was in the box, but the back of the boxes are relatively the same, but we don't have the rainbow styling on the side of the box any further. A company called Zircon, which is popular for manufacturing tools and invented the stud finder, bought Channel F rights from Fairchild and started selling the system themselves. When they did it, they made the console mail order only, so we didn't need to have colorful packages to get consumers' attentions on a retail floor. So they came in these very undescript, plain boxes that are kind of ugly, but these ones are a lot more rare and more expensive. What comes in the box is a cartridge that looks like this. This is Video Whiz Ball, my favorite. Yeah, one of my favorite. I'm not sure, not sure it's 100% my favorite, but one of my favorite Channel F games. Definitely one of the best and one of the most original, and this is gonna get its own review on this channel. So you can see that it's spring-loaded. See, this one was made by Zircon. It's spring-loaded and it hides the pin connectors. So these are really, really old, but my pin connectors are relatively clean because they've been, they've been covered this entire time. They also look a lot like an 8-track player, and I've had some success finding Channel F games by looking in the 8-track sections of you know, thrift stores. Also in the box for each game is a manual like this one. Really simple, simple instructions, sometimes not even screenshots and basic information on just how to play the game. In later Zircon releases, we would see 
black and white manuals that are not glossy paper and just seem like they would be printed on what feels like a normal inkjet printer. Before going any further and playing the Channel F, I wouldn't feel right about doing it without mentioning Jerry Lawson. Jerry Lawson is the engineer who created the Channel F entertainment system who worked for Fairchild starting in about 1970. Jerry was not only the engineer who designed the system, but he's also one of the pioneering black engineers in Silicon Valley history. This was all Jerry's baby. This is a New Yorker from Queens who taught himself engineering and became an engineer at what was at the time the biggest tech company in what would become Silicon Valley. He was so dedicated to keeping his project under budget that instead of using Fairchild's own memory chips, he went to Moss Technologies and dug memory chips out of the dumpster that didn't pass their tests. And he found that 90% of those worked well enough to build his consoles. This guy is a guy who was early in the video game scene, and he even interviewed Steve Wozniak and figured out that he just wasn't impressed with him and didn't end up hiring him or Jobs to work for Fairchild. Later in his life, Jerry Lawson spoke at a lot of retro gaming conventions and expos where he expressed his deep gratitude for people being interested in a system that was so forgotten for so long, but is really such an amazing game console to play as a collector, as a gamer. I freaking love the Channel F. It's outstanding. And gratitude that people were interested in his story, and I'm glad it's out there. Unfortunately, a few years ago, Mr. Lawson passed away, but his legacy will ever forever live on as the man who invented the video game cartridge and launched almost single-handedly the second generation of video game consoles and is a big part of gaming history. Let's play his creation. When the screen comes on, it says G question mark. What it's referring to is the buttons on the system. Game one or game two. So we're gonna play hockey, game one. Hockey is my one of my favorite games on the system. And it's telling me S question mark. S is asking us a question which is, do we want to start the game immediately or do we want to set a timer for the game? I like to play. And once the game starts, the ball is automatically in motion. Now, as the first player, I'm on the left. So watch this. I can move. This joystick has eight-way eight way directional movements. I can move left or right, up or down. Cool, but look, I told, as I showed you earlier, I can twist it, and as I twist it, it changes the direction of my paddle. And I can, look, I can go 360 degrees with my paddle. Okay, and I accidentally knocked it in my own goal. On my screen to the left, there's a goalkeeper, and I can move my goalkeeper up and down by pushing up pushing down or pulling up on what's called the plunger or the head of the stick. So let's watch this game in action a little bit. We got 43 seconds of gameplay remaining. What I really like about this is this really gets a rap for being a Pong clone, but it's not. This is really cool hockey because you can get right in the face of your opponent, block their shots, and go straight for their goal. Ooh. Oh, good shot, player two. Ooh, that was so close. And, and woo! Goal! Oh, that was bad for me. I'm gonna lose this game on my own console, on my own video, on my own YouTube video game channel. And that was game because I timed it. 
But that's just an example of hockey. I think I probably will do like a full on hockey review at some other time. Let's take a look at more games on the system now. This is tennis. Tennis is like hockey, except it's really pong. It's also a built-in game on the system and I'm going terribly for some reason. The problem with this game is that it's a little, the puck's a little, ball's a little faster when in motion than in hockey. And the controller, the moving up and down, or the controller, which is your only two controls that you have, this isn't fast enough like a paddle controller to keep up with the ball. So it's not a great version of Pong. But hockey, on the other hand, is like the best Pong permutation that was ever conceived. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this game, and we're going to take a look at some more games. Before I do, I want to point out one fact about this game system. The sound that you're hearing is not actually coming from the TV. Watch what happens when I turn up the volume on my television. You hear static. The reason why you hear static is because the Channel F, the original, has an internal speaker. So all the pings and boops and beeps are actually coming from a speaker inside the console. Next, we'll take a look at Shooting Gallery, which is on video cart number one. Shooting Gallery is a really simple game where the object of the game is to just shoot the moving target by pressing the down button. Got it. This is all you do in the game. This game was also featured on the television show called TV POW before the Channel F was replaced with and in television. Let's take a look at that show. Hi again, boys and girls. Back to the cartoons in a little bit. Inch High Private Eye is coming up, but right now it's time for our second game of Shooting Gallery of the Day. We've got 10-year-old Michael McNally from Anaheim. Michael, you ready? Yeah. Okay, we'll be rooting for you. you got a trip to the POW 1 toy box just for being here, POW 2 if you get more than one, POW 3 if you get more than five. So once again, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, then good luck, and let's POW! Pow. Too late. Pow. Too late. Pow. Got it. Pow. Yes, ma'am. Too late. Pow. Too late. Pow. Maybe. Good shot. Pow. Okay. Pow. Too late. Pow. Oh. Pow. Got it. Bottom of the screen. Pow. Got it. Great shot. Let's do our own version of TV Pow right here on Retro Game Living Room. I have a caller on the line. Say hello to the TV audience, caller. Hi. Hey, caller. Are you ready to play? Sure. Do you know what to do? Yes. Gentlemen, she's going to say pow as she's watching the live broadcast of our show, and then I'm going to hit the button when she says pow in order for her to win big prizes like this beautiful 36 Trinitron TV by Sony. Let's press the start button. Okay, caller. Say pow. 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 Good job! You hit one. Pow. That was my fault. Pow. Pow. Good job, caller. Pow. 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 <laughs> okay, I think that's a game. We do not have a winner today, and I'm keeping my glorious retro. Not really retro. I'm keeping my glorious 90s Trinitron TV for future episodes of Retro Game Room. Stick around. We'll be back after these messages. Hello everyone out there in TV land. If you're wondering what's coming up on Retro Game Living Room in the future, we're going to be 
Side Talking with Nokia. We're going to be playing Auto Race, the world's first electronic handheld video game. We're going to take a look at Gizmondo and get sticky with its balls. Last but not least, we'll be taking a look at the RCA Studio 2, playing games for that and, and more. So much more. Look around you. We have so much stuff here on Retro Game Living Room to review. We're going to be doing unboxings, playing rare games, playing obscure consoles. We're going to be having more Channel F reviews, more RCA Studio 2 reviews, more Sega, more Nintendo, more PlayStation, more Microsoft, more Xbox, just more. So subscribe. So Zig, how was it being a contestant on TV Pal? Was it easy? Yes. What was easy about it? Well, all I had to say was Pal. Was it easy to hit the targets? No. Why was it not easy to hit the targets? Well, there's a delay, obviously. So I say the word Pal, and then you have to hit the button. Yeah, and could you imagine if instead of being across the room telling me, pal, if you were across the country in the TV audience telling me, pal? Yeah, there would definitely been a much longer delay. So this was not an easy game show, do you think, to have played? Oh, for sure. Well, thank you, Zig. You win our consolation prize, which is this copy of Tennis 2K2 for Sega Dreamcast. Oh, thanks. Give her a hand, everybody. This is Video Cart 2, which has Desert Fox and again, Shooting Gallery. This is Desert Fox, which is Channel F's version of Combat. What's interesting about this game is that well, it doesn't have tape controls. You actually press the direction that you want to go. Okay, you don't run into the mines because this will blow you up. To turn, you twist the controller left and right, and to shoot, you just push it down. This is going to be video cart number five, which only contains the game Space War. In Space War, there are two competing enemy UFOs, and their goal is to shoot each other. To gain ammo, they hover over the little red dots. And if they get on the opposite sides of each other, you can switch. You can twist the controller to switch which direction you're shooting until a person wins. So congratulations, green player. You just beat me. This is video card 13, which contains a game called Robot War, which is a really interesting one or a two player game. Let's take a look. So in Robot War, the green guy is the man, and the red guys are robots. Now, it's the job of the man to try and trick the robots into running into these blue squares, which are force fields. But player two can anytime control the robots and try and get the man and avoid the force fields. But when player two is controlling the robots, they're controlling all of them at the same time, so it's still possible to trick them into running into stuff. Just like that. Galactic Space Wars, which also contains Lunar Lander. Space, the final frontier. It's empty and devoid of bad guys. This is a first person shooter in the vein of Star Trek where we explore the universe by flying around in circles, our motion is only depicted by the movement of the stars. So the stars are going to the right. Now I got the stars going to the left and up and down. And we, we just fly around kind of aimlessly until we find the guy that last. And you don't really see their shots come at you. You just see your screen flash because you're getting blasted. So I got them, I got them pretty fast that time. There's a couple different models of ships that you face off with. This one is like the Starship Enterprise. And I killed it. 
Bye bye, Captain Kirk. Picard's better anyway. So is Archer. This is exactly what it looks like it is. Clone of Lunar Lander. It's actually called Lunar Lander. I swear to God, I did this just before I started recording. Next game we're going to take a look at is Video Cart number 26, which is actually the last official release for the Fairchild Channel F. Video Cart 26 is Alien Invasion, which is a fairly competent port of Space Invaders. Instead of going to the menu screen in this game, you can just pick which variation of the game you want to play, similar to an Atari 2600 game. Modes 9 and 10 are two-player co-op. So let's go ahead and try that out since I actually do have a second player on hand with me for this review. If I went up to 10, the bad guys would be a little faster. But this is actually a nice, easy pace for a Space Invaders game. Alien Invaders on Channel F was developed by Reed Smith, who also created Video Whizball. Video Whizball is a game that we're going to do a review on solo by itself. It's also the very first game in history to have an Easter egg. Yes, it's not Adventure for Atari 2600. It's Video Whizball by Reed Seth on Channel F. So what's really sad is it says, it suggests, he asking for suggestions for new games, but this was the last game on the system. So it's pretty cool that he got credit, but it's awful that he didn't get to make anymore. Thank you, Reed Seth, for this amazing game. We're going to be taking a look at one last game before finishing up this video. This is Pac-Man, video cart number 27 for the Fairchild Channel F video entertainment system. This game is not a retail release, but this is an incredibly nice homebrew cartridge. It was made by Frederick, also developed by Tim Ryan. It's gorgeous and professional. It even comes with a Zircon style manual. And I can't wait to show it to you. So let's pop it in. Right off the bat, this game blows me away that it has an intro screen. It's the only game on Channel F to do any kind of intro. And it also has a modern select screen, so you can select left or right for player one or player two. I'm gonna play one player. The music and sound effects are pretty good. Considering this is a Channel F game, this is amazing. Channel F gets a really bad rep, I think, as being more of like a closer to a first generation console than a second generation console. Even though I haven't shown its best games in this video because I'm saving those for their own reviews. So I think that they're stand out enough that they deserve it. And I think what we've seen in this video really shows that uh, as, a, as a second generation console, Channel F really can't hold its own, and a Fairchild Semiconductor wanted to stick in the market, they had the resources and the skill to do that. Uh, this is powered by their F8 processor. Channel F is powered by the F8 processor, 
which I always wondered if that was the reason why it's called channel F, but the marketing says the F stands for fun. It could be, it could be that's because it's powered by the F8 processor, which was the most popular microcomputer processor, the most popular microprocessor on the market until 1977. So the Fairchild has been around for a long time. It was recently, only just recently, dissolved as its own corporation and merged into another. But it has been around for over half a century. So I haven't really been paying attention to this level because I'm talking to you. So I'm going to get this power pellet and I just want to show you what it looks like when you get to a second level. Compared to Pac-Man in the arcade or in other game consoles, more faithful boards, this one is a little slow. And then we don't have the constant background music either, except for the sound effects. But we do have the intro music, which is super cool. This video game is probably pushing the channel F to its extreme limits. Oh, I want to run that guy. The thing I really like about this game is that the ghosts don't return back to the center of the screen. They stay in that ghost eyeball form until the uh, power pellet invincibility period has passed, which makes it easier on you, the player. So here we have actually a cutscene in it. So this beat level two. And it actually shows the Pac-Man cutscenes. I think it sounds awesome. And it looks awesome. So the developers of this game just did a totally awesome job. Did I mention awesome? I can't remember. Thanks for watching while I play and introduce you to one of the my favorite game consoles and one of the very best ones of all time. This easily makes my top at least 15 list, if not my top 10 favorite consoles of all time. It's definitely in my top three for the second generation, which if you know how many consoles were released then, it's kind of a lot of systems. This isn't the last time we're going to take a look at Channel F games. We have reviews coming up, such as Video Whizball, which is, in a lot of people's opinion, the best game on Channel F, and one of the best games, I think, of the second generation, especially the early phase. So there's more Channel F stuff coming up. Subscribe, watch our videos, see you around.